Hello everyone, Interact here with another episode of Entity Education. In this episode, we're going to be covering the Mastermind, probably better known as Albert Wesker. As always, timestamps will be in the description and on the time track, as well as the pinned comment. So finally, this first section actually has a reason for existing, for what feels like the first time in forever, because Wesker does not have the same exact base stats as most other killers. He does have your normal default boring 4.6 meters per second or 115% speed, however my man is so cool that he gives off an increased terror radius of 40 meters. He's just too cool with his slicked back hair and his shades, he can't help but be scary, I guess? So now let's move on to talking about Albert's power, Virulent Bound. As with all modern killers, there's pretty much two parts or more to the power, so you know the drill, grab a snack, get comfortable. Also. Quickly, I will shout out one of my mods, the math magician himself, Chalms, for all the help on the tons of complex math that eventually got scrapped, because it turns out that even Occam's Razor works sometimes in Dead by Daylight. And for simplicity's sake, and mostly just to give you a choice of how in-depth you want me to go, I'm gonna have timestamps on the screen right now, and in the chapter list to skip for a simple explanation and a more detailed explanation. Feel free to watch both if you want, or choose one. I know some people like all the nitty gritty, super detailed number stuff, some people might just want a quick explanation, so I'll try to include both in videos from now on, um, especially for killers that have a lot of math and a lot of different things going on. Leave a comment on which you prefer and if I should do this split thing in the, in the future. So first for the simplified version, we'll start off by talking about the actual bounding portion of his power. The first thing to notice is that like nurse or artist, um, you have a number in the bottom in the bottom left of your screen on your power icon, in the top right of that icon there is a little number. This is how many bounds you have available to use up to a maximum of two. By holding down mouse 2 on PC of course you'll begin to charge your virulent bound. After 1.5 seconds you'll be able to press mouse 1 PC again to bound forward for about 7 meters and then you'll be able to move around while heavily slowed for 2 seconds in a chain bound window essentially or use another virulent bound. You can do it instantaneously if you want to, you don't have to wait two seconds. If you do use another virulent bound, you'll shoot forward for another, again, for 14 meters this time. Once all of that is done, virulent bound will go on recharge for 12 seconds, or six seconds per bound that you have actually used. If you hit a survivor with one of your virulent bounds, you will grab them into your tentacle arm and go forward for an extra 12 meters, and the survivor will become infected with the Ouroboros virus. If you manage to run into anything with collision, including other survivors, while you have a survivor grabbed, the grabbed survivor will take damage, and you will go into a cooldown state. Any survivor that you actually hit will um, instead just get a injured and deep wounded. If you miss colliding with something, like a wall or a tree or something, during that extra 12 meters after grabbing them, you'll throw the survivor roughly 8 meters forward. If they hit anything during that throw, once again they'll take an injury. And if they're already injured, they'll just get downed. You'll get another cooldown state, a bit heavier of a cooldown state after throwing a survivor to give this some, them some time to run away and make distance, although they do have a like standing up animation that takes a bit of time and they're not allowed to move during that. If you throw a survivor and they don't actually collide with anything during that 8 meters that they're traveling forward, they won't take any damage at all, they'll just gain the infection from being grabbed initially. As I said, you can collide survivors into other survivors, and any injured survivor hit with a grabbed or thrown survivor won't be downed, they will instead just get deep wounds if they're already injured. If you're using Virulent Bound and you manage to hit a pallet or a window with it, you will vault right over it at an increased speed compared to a normal killer vault. If you hit a window or a pallet and a survivor is currently in a vaulting animation on it, you'll just get like a modified attack where you slap them with your tentacle arm, as if you had essentially done a normal attack, although they do still get infected from this uh, modified attack. Now as far as what the Ouroboros virus infection actually does, for every infected survivor with a white border on the HUD to the left, you'll get a reduction to your recharge time of your virulent bounds, so you'll be able to bound more often. If any survivor gets fully infected, i.e. their HUD icon on the left turns into the red leeches, they'll essentially be treated as if they are exposed for your virulent bound attacks, 
They are not exposed for throws, however. Those will still only just deal damage and will be slowed down until they remove their infection. Survivors remove their infection by going to any of the supply cases that are highlighted for them on the map if they are infected and looting a first aid spray and then spraying themselves down or they can even spray down other survivors. This takes them five seconds to spray down. Each first aid spray has two charges so they can hold on to it and disinfect themselves or another person or disinfect themselves twice. After any survivor is finished being hosed down to get the leeches off them, you'll get a killer instinct notification for four seconds at their location. Okay, so now for the complicated version that includes all of the numbers and all the nitty gritty and all that nonsense. Wesker starts with two charges of Virulent Bound. You can use Virulent Bound by holding down mouse two, and this will have you start a charge time. Once you finish that charge time of 1.5 seconds, you can press mouse one to just bound forward. You will be slowed down to 3.68 meters per second or 92% speed while charging up or holding a charge of virulent bound. And as I said, once fully charged, you just press mouse one and you will bound forward. The first virulent bound that you use will travel for half of a second, 0.5 seconds, and move you roughly 7 meters forward. After that, you will get a 2 second window in which you can move around a little bit, and you're able to use a second virulent bound, assuming that you have one of your charges remaining. While in this chain virulent bound state, you will move at a very slow 2.76 meters per second or 69 nice percent speed. If you do use the second virulent bound during the chain window, it travels for one second and moves you roughly 14 meters forward. Both uses of virulent bound require a recharge similar to the nurse, and it takes six seconds per bound charge used to be able to bound again. Also like the nurse, if you want to use simply a single bound, when you only have a single charge, you are allowed to do that. If you don't hit anything with your virulent bound, you'll be put into a cooldown state, and if you cancel virulent bound after fully charging it, you get a shorter cooldown than if you hit something, just a short cooldown of 1.5 seconds after canceling the virulent bound. If your virulent bound hits a window or a pallet, you will vault over it in one second and then cancel any remaining bounds that you might have left over and Wesker goes into cooldown for 1.5 seconds. You aren't actually able to bound a second time after vaulting. So now let's talk about what happens if you actually hit a survivor with your virulent bound. Firstly, you'll grab them up into your tentacles clutches and continue going forward. Grabbing a survivor gives you an extra 0.86 seconds of bounding forward. Do keep in mind this is not an additional 0.86 seconds added on top of however long the bound had left, but a flat 0.86 seconds to keep going forward with the survivor grabbed in your arm. This translates to roughly 12 extra meters of distance after grabbing a survivor that you will go forward and attempt to hit a wall or end up throwing them. I make a special mention of this being a flat amount of time added and distance as well since they're correlated because it means that if you hit a point blank bound or if you hit them at the very end of your second bound, you're going the same amount of distance. And yes, I tested this multiple times just to make sure. If the bound manages to hit a survivor while they're in a vaulting animation at a window or a pallet, they'll take damage as if you normally hit them. They do get infected, however. There's no grabbing involved at vault locations. Um, this also seems to be coded in such a way that even if a pallet isn't dropped, if they're in the area where they would be able to vault the pallet, or you might get stunned by the pallet, I'm not entirely sure, it's like 3 meters, I don't really know the pallet stun distance. You just hit them, you won't grab them. I assume this is just done in a way to simplify so the game doesn't have to actually figure out what would happen if you grabbed a survivor and then the pallet drops on you at the same time, although I'm not entirely sure, that's just speculation on my part. Any of these hits at vault locations will incur the normal hitting a survivor cooldown of 3 seconds though. So there are two things that can happen after grabbing a survivor with virulent bound. The code says that allegedly, if you get within one meter of an object of an object's collision box, including another survivor, you will slam the held survivor against it, damaging them, although this is a bit finicky, as anyone who has actually played Wesker before will know. The collision boxes are all kinds of jank all over the place. Any survivor that you collide with will also be damaged, as well as gaining the deep wound status effect for the extra rubbins. 
but do keep in mind that any survivor collided with will not actually get downed. So if you hit an already infected or an already injured survivor, excuse me, they will just get deep wounds. They won't, you can't down two survivors at once with your power, sadly. If the survivor that you grab with your bound is already injured, you will instead just put them on your back if you run into a wall and be able to take them to a hook. This obviously doesn't put you in a cooldown state. You do have like the throwing them over your shoulder cooldown air quotes thing. And your virulent balance will still need to recharge afterwards. If you don't end up colliding with an object while holding a survivor in a virulent bound, once the bound ends, you just yeet them forward, roughly 8.4 meters. And once again, the same rules apply if they hit an object with collision or another survivor with that throw. If they hit nothing, then nothing, ha they don't take damage. So let's get into the more passive portion of Wesker's ability, the Ouroboros virus. Hitting a survivor with virulent bound will infect them with Ouroboros virus. This puts a white leech border circle around their player icon in the left hand side of the HUD. They will start off by gaining 20 charges when hit with a virulent bound, and then will slowly gain 0.8 charges per second until they reach 100 charges, at which point they will become fully infected. Any fully infected survivor will have the leech border icon turned to red, so denoting that they're fully infected. All fully infected survivors will suffer from the hindered status effect, being slowed by 8%, as well as essentially being treated as exposed for Wesker's bounds. This means that if you grab a survivor with a virulent bound and you connect with a collision object, uh, or even hit a fully infected survivor at one of the vault locations without it actually grabbing them, they will instantly get downed, even if they're fully healthy. Any thrown survivor is immune from this pseudo-exposed status effect and will just be damaged normally. Survivors can cleanse themselves of the Ouroboros virus by picking up one of the six first aid sprays in supply boxes scattered around the map, which are highlighted for them while they are infected, although they don't have to be infected to actually loot the box if they come across it normally. Using a first aid spray will take five seconds total, and survivors can use them on other survivors to cure their infections as well. Each first aid spray also comes with two charges, meaning that survivors can cleanse infections 12 times total throughout a match. After any survivor uses a first aid spray on themselves or anyone else, whoever had their infection removed will give off a killer instinct notification for four seconds. So for each survivor that is infected with the Ouroboros virus, the recharge time of your virulent balance will be reduced by half of a second, 0.5 seconds. They do not have to be fully infected, so they don't have to have the red leech icon. Any white leech icon will also apply this recharge reduction, and that is per recharge of virulent bound. So recharging two virulent bounds will take one second less per infected survivor. This means that if you have all survivors infected and you need to recharge all of your virulent bounds, it will take you eight seconds instead of the normal 12 seconds to fully recover. And just a thing to note that I've noticed while playing is that any fully infected survivor who gets hooked loses half of their infection. So they go from being 100% fully infected red border to being at 50 charges of infection once they get unhooked. Another special thing to note is that any survivor that you hit with a bound that has the endurance status effect will do the special tentacle slap attack and you won't actually be able to grab them. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about add-ons. We start off at the common tier with Ouroboros Tendril. This add-on will increase your movement speed while charging Virulent Bound by 5%, bringing it up to 3.86 meters per second or 96.5% speed. Next up is Unicorn Medallion. This add-on will increase the initial Virulent Bound distance by 20%, allegedly, but reduce the follow-up bound distance by an alleged 20% as well. This add-on actually just modifies the duration of each bound, which in turn changes the distance traveled. Basically, the first bound will go from being half of a second to 0.6 seconds, bringing it up to about 8.4 meters of distance traveled. And the second bound will only last 0.8 seconds, bringing it down to 11.2 meters of distance traveled. This actually leads to a loss of total overall distance if you are using it just to move in a straight line forward making you only go 19.6 meters instead of the normal 21 meters, 
which is a reduction of 1.4 meters overall, although your first bound going further can be nicer for catching them out with only one charge. Following up on that, we have the exact opposite, RPD shoulder walking. This add-on will do just the opposite of the Unicorn Medallion, instead reducing your initial bound distance by 20% while increasing the second bound, the follow-up one, by 20%. This means that it will decrease the duration of the first bound down to 0.4 seconds, making you only travel 5.6 meters, and increase the duration of the second bound to 1.2 seconds, letting you travel 16.8 meters with that one. This actually leads to an increase in overall distance if you are using it to move in a straight line, making you go 22.4 meters instead of the normal 21 meters, which is an increase of 1.4 meters, although the first bound is a tiny little baby bound. And the final common add-on is of course a meme BP add-on because what would the game be without them? Jewel Beetle. This add-on decreases the virulent bound extension when grabbing a survivor mid-bound by 50%, but gives you an extra 100% blood points for virulent bound score events. This reduces you down to only an extra 0.43 seconds of extension to your bound after grabbing a survivor, although extension, maybe not the best wording, but that's what behavior says, so whatever. Basically, you only go an extra 6 meters of distance instead of the normal 12 after you hit a survivor with a bound. Moving on to the uncommon add-ons now, we start with Loose Crank. This add-on will increase the movement speed between your first and second virulent bounds, so while you're in that virulent bound chain window thing, by 8%, bringing you up to 2.98 meters per second, or 74.5% speed. Following that is Lion Medallion. This item will increase the distance at which survivors are thrown by 30%, bringing it up to 10.92 meters total. Next up is Leather Gloves. This add-on will decrease the time to recharge virulent bound by 10%, bringing you down to a baseline of 5.4 seconds to recharge per bound. So in total, you can get it down with all four survivors infected down to 3.4 seconds. Next up is Chalice Parentheses Gold. What a stupid naming convention. Surely they won't repeat it for the other add-ons, right? Mm. This add-on will increase the virulent bound extension when grabbing a survivor mid-bound by 50%, bringing it up to an extra 1.29 seconds after scooping someone up with your weird tentacle hand. This means that you will travel an additional 18.06 meters after grabbing a survivor, which almost guarantees that you're going to run into something... And the final uncommon add-on is Bullhorn. This add-on will make survivors who use the first aid spray suffer from the oblivious status effect for 30 seconds. How an item that is used to make someone louder in fact makes Wesker quieter, I have no idea. Maybe he like blows out their eardrums or something and then they can't hear his terror radius, who knows. Moving on to the rare add-ons now, we start with a video conference device. This add-on will increase the infection passive gain rate by 30%, which is a really dumb way of wording it, but I don't write these. This means that your infection rate will go from 0.8 charges per second to 1.04 charges per second. Next up is Red Herb. This add-on will increase the time it takes a survivor to use a first aid spray by 2 seconds, bringing it up to 7 seconds total of hosing themselves or somebody else off to get rid of the Leechmonger's debuff. Following that is Portable Safe. This add-on will make survivors injured by virulent bounds suffer from the hemorrhage status effect until fully healed. Just does what it says. And following that is the Maiden Medallion. This add-on will make survivors maidenless, but let's be honest, they already are, so kind of a waste of an add-on slot. Jokes aside, this add-on will make survivors who become fully infected suffer from the blindness status effect for 60 seconds. I think my idea is just better and would probably see more play. And the final rare add-on is Gold Egg Parentheses, Egg Parentheses Gold. I can't even say it right because it's so dumb. Why, why name things like this? I know it's an homage, but still. This add-on will increase the duration of the additional virulent bound window by 50%, bringing you up to 3 seconds to get your second bound going. Now going up a tier, the first very rare add-on is Ouroboros Virus, which is just the name of the pow- but anyways. This add-on will eat its own tail. Uh, this add-on will make survivors have their auras revealed for 4 seconds once they fully reach top level infection. Full infection. Red infection. Red leeches. Following that is Helicopter Stick. This add-on will make it so when a survivor uses a first aid spray, their ore is revealed for 8 seconds. Next up is Green Herb. This add-on will not do anything related to healing because fuck theming, I guess. 
Green herb will instead increase the rate of infection by 30% when grabbing a survivor during a virulent bound. This essentially just means that any survivor that you grab with your power gains 26 charges of infection instead of the normal 20. And finally, we have dark sunglasses. This add-on will make you blind while indoors, but look really cool. I may, uh, may, it makes it so survivors who are fully infected with the Ouroboros virus, as soon as that happens, you gain the undetectable status effect for 20 seconds due to how cool he looks wearing sunglasses indoors, I guess? So let's talk about Whiskers Ultra Rare add-ons. We start with the Lab Photo. This add-on will make it so instead of vaulting pallets while using Virulent Bound, you will break pallets and breakable walls with your Virulent Bound. Somehow Behavior worded this way worse than I had written it, but hey, you know, that's par for the course, I guess. And the final ultra rare add-on and final add-on in general is Iridescent Ouroboros Vial. This add-on will make all survivors begin the match covered in the sticky, yucky leeches, as well as making any survivor suffer from the exposed status effect for 30 seconds when they reach maximum infection. Part of me is shocked that this isn't a really stupidly small number, like 8 seconds, and part of me is kind of proud of behavior for realizing that making exposed add-ons with like 8 seconds of duration is a really bad idea. Finally, after all these years they've done it, I can't wait for it to get nerfed. Now let's get into the teachable perks that you'll unlock when you put your blood points into Cool Glasses Guy. First you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Superior Anatomy. Superior Anatomy, aka Built Different, will make it so when a survivor performs a rushed vault within 8 meters of you, it will activate and increase your next vault by 30-35-40% speed when you vault the window. Superior Anatomy is a lie because it has a cooldown of 30 seconds and being truly built different has no cooldown. The second teachable that you'll unlock is Awakened Awareness, aka having children. Awakened Awareness will make it so while you are carrying a survivor, the aura of all other survivors within 16 slash 18 slash 20 meters of you is revealed. And the final teachable that you'll unlock is Terminus. How fitting. Terminus will activate once the exit gates are powered, aka the final generator is completed. I don't know why they don't just say that. Anyways, while active, all injured, dying, and hooked survivors will suffer from the broken status effect until an exit gate is opened, and even have the effect linger for 20 slash 25 slash 30 seconds. This is essentially we have no edit home. So let's talk about tips now for playing Wesker. The first tip is that your power can be used to just kind of move around the map pretty quickly. At the start of a match, there's no reason to not just double bound across the map towards where you think survivors may have spawned, or maybe even where you know they spawned because you're running like Lethal Pursuer, or some maps just have really stupid spawns, or you saw crows go off. By the time you actually reach a survivor across the map, your power will most likely be off of its recharge and ready to go. The next thing is going to be something that takes a bit of time, but you really want to know what loops you can actually get usage out of your power from, and which ones you can't, and you should just take like a normal M1 killer. Most of the random junk tiles in the game are kind of like crescent moon shaped or curved in some way, which makes them really bad for trying to use your straight line power on. And as far as window loops go, uh, for the most part it isn't really worth using your power on them since you do have that you lose the ability to use the second bound and you have to go into the cooldown. But any second story window with a large drop on it, like in on Badham or Thompson House, Haddonfield, whatever the dredge map is called, is basically a guaranteed hit. Your increased vault speed, plus the ability to dash at the window rapidly and be able to like hit the vault from you know seven meters away, plus the survivor's fall stagger and your cooldown after vaulting being really low, and starting mid-air makes it just basically a free hit. Just be wary of any survivor running balanced landing because that will still screw you over. One of the ways that you might want to use your power is like a back revving essentially from Hillbilly and you want to be extremely comfortable in reading how a survivor is going to juke and know the hitbox of virulent bound if you're attempting to do this. The worst thing is that getting in a chase and getting right up to them with your power charged and then they just dodge out of the way and you're like 7 meters or even worse 14 meters in the other direction and they're already running to a different pallet and you're cooling down. If you aren't super confident just try for an M1 basic attack or try to angle it so you collide with an object and prevent them from getting too far away if you do actually land the bound. In the same vein, you want to attempt to land all of your bounds in a way that ends with you colliding with some terrain. 
or throw a survivor into an area that you know doesn't have any pallets and is kind of a, a dead zone. Throwing survivors is hilarious and all, but the hitboxes for thrown survivors seem to be worse than the normal grabbed ones and are pretty inconsistent. And if you don't actually collide them with an object, they don't actually take damage and you've kind of wasted your power. All you've done is infected them a little bit. And I think that there is a method to kind of, as soon as you hit a bound, kind of change the angle of it a little bit. But it's, I'm not entirely sure if this is a bug or not, so I'm not really going to go into it. Just know that you can sometimes do it. So now let's talk about perk builds for Wesker. As I always end up saying in these videos, it's a bit early to really say what like the meta build is. Personally, I've been having a lot of fun with Clownophobia. I don't know how to actually pronounce that real world word, so I just call it Clownophobia. Bamboozle, Brutal Strength, and Call of Brine, something along those lines. Most sane people would replace Clownophobia with a real perk like Overcharge, Eruption, or Corrupt Intervention, Lethal Pursuer, or something like that, but my brain is broken. Clownophobia is pretty much there to just take advantage of Wesker's 40 meter terror radius and slow survivors down on healing. Making them slow their healing down and making them have to spray leeches off of them in addition to that can lead to some decent game delay in my opinion. This one is map dependent though because I've gotten it on things, massive maps like Ormond or Red Forest and basically gotten zero value out of it. Bamboozle and Brutal Strength are pretty self-explanatory. Bamboozle lets you use your power to cut off strong windows. Although I don't believe it increases the vault speed, I tested it and it seems to be just a flat one second, so you have to actually press space on the vault for the bamboozle to work, but it's if you use your power you still block off the window, so that's nice. And Brutal lets you kick pallets and generators faster, which will in turn apply your call of brine or your overcharge or, you know, eruption, whatever, to generators and give you some tracking if you're running call of brine when the survivor hops back on the generator. If you do drop Clownophobia for Eruption, this will give you more value from having kicked a bunch of generators to apply Call of Brine to them. Overcharge is basically the same, little extra slowdown, and maybe some built-in tracking if they don't not hit those skill checks, but most experienced survivors can. And Overcharge doesn't actually require you to go to get extra downs for it to trigger. Eruption, on the other hand, will give you a little bit of extra value with the incapacitated status effect every once in a while if they stay on the generators when you down someone. It's really up to preference and what you have unlocked, what you feel like running. So now let's move on to the best part, meme builds for Whiskers the Cool Cat. The first meme build is I can't read my add-ons with these cool shades. For this build, you're going to want to bring the add-ons Unicorn Medallion and RPD Shoulder Walkie. Don't bother reading them. Reading and math is for nerds who don't have cool sunglasses and cool hair, and giant tentacle arms. Bring whatever perks you want, but don't read them either. Refer back to the previous sentence if you need to know why you should be reading them. Instead, just think about how much time Calsum spent going through the torment of doing cubic spine replacements, or whatever the hell he called them, cubic spine reduction, I don't know man. He did some weird math thing, and it ended up not even being needed to done needed to be used for this video because we tested it and it was actually as what I thought originally which is way simpler and doesn't require calculus. The second meme build is the transporter. For this build bring whatever perks you want but if you want to fully commit to the build you want to bring stuff that makes you go faster. So like agitation, play with your food, mad grit, iron grasp maybe, I don't know there's not that many go fast perks. This build is more about the add-ons though. You're going to want to bring Lion Medallion and Chalice parentheses gold and parentheses. This way whenever you grab a survivor, you're either going to take them on an extra long romantic getaway in your tentacles grasp, and if they don't choose to end the trip by slam getting slammed into a wall, you can yeet them as far away from your Sigma ass as possible because you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. And that's it for this episode of Entity Education, covering the Mastermind, probably better known as just Wesker. The one thing that I always forget to do in these endings is to tell people that I have a Discord and you can join that. Uh, we talk about a tons of different stuff, music, other games, dumb memes, and play other games and stuff. Also links to all social media, Twitch stream, Patreon, all that stuff in the description. Thanks to the patrons as always. And thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.